Addictions can be so destructive to a person's life, not just to their own life, but to others around them. And addictions can take many different forms. In this podcast, we talk with Roman Mironov about his addiction to porn and how he overcome that. Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care, and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Hello and welcome to eShare. Here we discuss, promote, and share the benefits to all from living in an egalitarian society, including men. Inaccurate propaganda leads some men to believe that they miss out with equality. The reality, suppressing women is detrimental to men. Creating a world where everyone can, can contribute equally makes everyone better off. Now, today it's my great pleasure to welcome Roman Mironov to the show. He discovered porn at 14 and quickly became a porn addict. He missed the next five years of dating and developing relationship and dating skills. Later, this spilled over into his marriage, which fell apart partly because of porn. Now, today he's been porn-free for eight years and helps others live a porn-free life, take charge of their life, and become more confident and attractive to women. Welcome, Roman. Hi, Damien. Thank you for having me. Uh, It's it's a a pleasure. No, thank you. No, the pleasure is mine. It's it's really wonderful to to have you on the show. Can we can we start first? Can we step back in time? Can we dump jump in the you know, go go and see Doc Brown and jump in the DeLorean time machine and go back and and talk about some of your your history and the challenges that you overcome uh, to do what you're doing now? Okay, and when I'm actually driving the DeLorean, can I can I make changes? To the well, you can try as long as you hit 88 miles an hour because if you don't get to 88 miles an hour you would just drive straight into that new stand and, and crash which we don't want to see okay yeah it's actually a good thing because i don't know miles i, I only know kilometers you know i'm that's okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all right how, all right, how is that yeah. possible you're in the states yeah you, oh you're now you're in canada I yeah, it, it, oh, in sorry. Canada, we have oh. this weird combination of both yeah. systems, which makes no sense, but that's how it works. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, yeah, you're exactly. Because, I mean, I, I I kind of relate a little bit. My parents grew up with miles and they taught me that. So I understand a little bit, certainly feet and inches, because that's what my dad, when I was building with him. Um, but now I'm interrupting now. I'm, I'm, I'm stepping in the way of your time machine journey. Go, go ahead and hit 88 miles an hour and, and jump back in time and tell us about the challenges and, and issues that you, you overcome to do what you're doing now. Okay. So I am an addictive guy. I have this kind of a personality. For me, it's black or white. That's it. I don't know the gray zone. So if I start doing something, I just can't stop. And when I discovered pornography when I was 14 and actually it was my friend introducing me to it I thought wow this is my sex I have no other lane no other alternative Mm -hmm. I I should just watch it all the time and like this is all there is I should give my 100% to it and I kind of forgot about the idea of the possibility of having real sex so For a very, very long time, until 21, I had zero sex. I was a virgin. I was watching porn, Mm. very shy, no social skills, very, very shy around girls. I I knew what I had to do. I knew that I I had to approach them, talk to them, because I did want a girlfriend. That was weird, because I didn't want sex, because I had my sex in pornography, but I still wanted the intimacy that comes with a girlfriend. Mm. And 
Yeah. I I was to, I was totally missing on that. Yeah. Now, by luck, by luck, I did end up with a girlfriend. She basically fell into my lap, and <laughs> the best kind. Come on. <laughs> It's yes, like, and like Cinderella. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Or well, maybe I was a Cinderella. <laughs> and <laughs> because, because, yeah, because I got lucky. And what happened next is we got into this relationship and I forgot about porn for for about a couple of years. But then when the newness in the relationship died off, I started finding myself going back to it all the time. And it literally was killing me because i i wanted to go to watch porn but at the same time i knew in my heart that it was cheating so mm -hmm. i was also destroying the relationship and while i was doing this i still never developed relationship skills i did not really understand my wife porn was holding me back from really getting to know her getting to know what women are about seeing the differences between masculinity and femininity yeah. and th all that fast forward seven or eight years mm -hmm. it destroyed my marriage because i never learned those skills and i was watching pornography whenever i had depression or i felt bored i would just run away from my home go to my office sit there watch porn get some quick pleasure and had that escape i was using it as a coping mechanism yeah. and i as a result i was not able to be engaged with my family even my little son was mm -hmm. at that at that point he was one year old or then two years old and finally what happened is that my wife got fed up with me she got fed up with me being not engaged in the family life and also not understanding her in so many ways. Basically, what I, I was doing, yeah. I was treating her like a like like she were a man, which uh, she wasn't. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> yeah. surprise, surprise. Yeah. So yeah. So she divorced me. She said bye bye, and then I moved in with my parents. At that time, I was thirty two. Yeah. I lived in their basement. I hated myself. I hated my life. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, I don't like this trajectory. I am actually a very disciplined guy. But at that point, I was disciplined. My discipline went actually into watching porn and being and having this self-hatred and shame and guilt. Yeah. And I said, I need to reverse this. There is no way I can continue like this because I'll just very quickly drive myself into the ground. Yeah. And that's when I stopped watching pornography. I started developing my social skills. I tried, I did my best to push myself as much as possible so that I could compensate for the years I lost not learning the skills, not mm -hmm. knowing how to interact with other human beings, not knowing how to be present in my relationship and present in my life in general. And then what I did was actually I shared my story online. Mm -hmm. And people people resonated with it. I never realized this. I never thought that so many people have this addiction to pornography and masturbation. Mm -hmm. It turns out the number is really, really huge. Yeah, that's what I feel. Problem. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But that's yeah. what I feel. And the number keeps increasing with all this technology that we have, with the power that the porn industry is gaining all the time. Mm -hmm. With VR that is coming, with people being more isolated after COVID and just getting more isolated because of social media, this, like the trend of watching porn and porn being a problem, really holding people back, it's on the rise. And it's a real problem. With me, it was mostly with my social skills. That's where pornography held me back. But with other guys, oftentimes it's simply success. It's productivity. It's their goals. They they set goals, but then they don't work on them. They never accomplish them because porn is literally holding them back. Mm. That's why, as a coach, I love to work with people. I love to work with mostly with guys. And what I do is I help them 
build a basic system and I, I call it no fab system. So no fab, no fapping, no masturbation. And, and then I push them. I make them accountable to ensure that they break free from this addiction. Ooh. Yeah, wow. Um, when you talk about being an addictive personal, um, person, is that, I mean, because you mentioned you you it's it's black or white you you either you're going it sounds like you're either going flat out at something or you're not doing it at all uh if i understand that correctly with as as being um the, what how do you know like are you addicted to other things or is it just was it just mainly porn that you were addicted to when you talk about having an addictive personality um yes 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 i was addicted to many things yeah my worst addiction I think the other two worst addictions were, if you can say that, I had three worst addictions. <laughs> no. We can make sound, that. Sound, yeah. <laughs> Something Fine. doesn't make sense here grammatically. <laughs> anyway, two other addictions were first, sleep. I was a sleep addict for a very, very long time until I actually broke free from it in 2018. And, I, you know, I hated myself for porn, but for sleep, I hated myself probably even more because I would I would sleep in maybe for I don't know sometimes 4 5 6 hours and at one point I had to stay in my office so I had like a bedroom there and my colleagues would come in the morning and mm. I would be sleeping and even that embarrassment would not be enough motivation for me to get up so you're sleeping on your desk is that what you mean or i had a bed you had a bed i had a, bed in in my, I had a bedroom yeah like a small bedroom but they they were able to see me actually in your and office the were you the boss or were you the the um employee no i was a janitor yeah i was a boss <laughs> okay so yeah so you were you come in and and all right so then you'd be sleeping in in your office in your little room that whatever you mentioned that you had and you, people come in and that didn't bother you. You just, just sleep away. It bothered me, oh, it did? but okay. it did not bother me enough to get up right on time. Well, well, what was your other addiction? Yeah. The other one was content addiction. So when, when I first went online, I mm -hmm. saw I saw the internet and it was very, very, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but that was in 2001. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm that old. I'm 40. And what happened? Don't be too concerned. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 50. And so I remember not even having the internet. <laughs> 50? I thought yeah. you were 15. Yeah, no, and then it was a. It's you know, obviously, I, I look a lot younger than I do, which you know now is a blessing. But when I was younger, it was a bit of a curse. When I was trying to buy alcohol, it was like always getting asked for ID. It was it was kind of weird. But anyway, I hated it. Yeah, you know, when I was younger, because it always looks. Uh, I looked younger, but yeah. So you're so don't be embarrassed about being forty. Forty. It's <laughs> it's just a number. <laughs> okay. Did did you just? Did did you just say all of this to convince me to sell you alcohol? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. No, I don't believe you. <laughs> okay, no, no. Yeah, I, 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 um, I, I, you know, I, I used to drink a lot. I don't drink anymore. I drank all my share at once. So, um, it's a, that's another story for another time. But <laughs> so you you addicted to content. Talk about your your addiction to content. You found the internet and you've gone. Wow, there's this whole world of information out there. What 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 were you surfing mostly forums yeah now they're not that popular as they were yeah. before but when i discovered forums i was just wow you know people from all over the world just sharing their opinions their yeah. stories their ideas and i got hooked yeah and it so it's been going on from for about i would say 16 years and i would just lose myself online completely lose so yeah. i would wake up in the morning mm -hmm. if i did wake up on time and i knew i had my work to do a lot of work actually but i i would say to myself uh okay i'm gonna look at a couple of forums because mm -hmm. i don't actually want to do the work i feel bored and then i would just be 
I would just get lost in all this information. And I would spend there. I would just sit in front of the monitor for 15 hours straight, basically mm-hmm. never going to the bathroom, never eating, like pushing myself as much as I can into the night. Mm. Just, just, you know, because I, I am prone to thinking. I'm overthinking things. So <laughs> when I watched porn or when I watched content, this helped me actually overcome that overthinking, shut down my thinking mind. And I did not have any better tools at that point. So yes. I thought that this was this was my only escape. So with the overthinking, when you say you didn't have any better tools, what was, you know, have you what tools do you now use? Because that's I would say probably a common problem that a lot of people do have is, you know, they're they're constantly thinking. And, you know, how did you find to what did you do to overcome that i do three practical things the first one is when i meditate in the morning Mm -hmm. my 20 minutes i program that state of no thought into my mind and whenever i catch myself overthinking during the day i just push myself to return to that state i know what it is and then i know that i can go to it yeah. So that's what I do. Not easy, but I'm doing my best. The second thing is just pushing myself to get present to the moment. <laughs> and yeah. I don't I don't want to sound too woo-woo, but the idea is this what whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to expand my consciousness mm-hmm. in order to include everything that's around me. Let's mm-hmm. say I'm driving. Yeah. Instead of thinking, I'm just trying to to get this like 270 degree view of everything that's going on around me. I am I'm very, very present to the pedestrians, other cars. So I mm. want to be engaged in the process 100 yeah. percent And and then the third thing, the third thing that I do when it comes to overthinking is I will oftentimes just push myself to do the thing without thinking. And maybe I know that this could lead to a problem, but I will still do it. So for me, even if I fail, it's better to do the thing and fail than to overthink, overthink, overthink. So I push myself to fail more. And sometimes, sometimes, even uh, even if I see, let's say, something falling, let's say, off the table, mm-hmm. I will just let it fall. Because mm. for me, it's it's teaching my brain that it's okay not to be thinking about optimizing and making things perfect, but it's okay for things to fail sometimes. Yeah, oh, it's that's why like I'm a thing. failure, by the way. Yeah, that's well. There's a lot you can learn. You, we learn more from failure than we do from success in in most cases. Um, so when you you're talking about that, this um. The you you've got the, the three addictions you talked about being porn, um, sleep, and and content. Talk us through. You know, was there? Did you have a a plan for your future, so to speak? Did you have goals? To what what was that process? Because did you have that in place then? I'm just curious to understand whether that was something that you'd actively done. For which one? All three, like for your life at that point in time. So you say you discovered porn at, at 14, um, you know, and then I'm guessing you know, with a sleep addict, uh, I'm not sure if that, you, you, that was before you started work, um, but certainly while you were working. So I'm guessing that's a little bit later than 14. Um, and then content, I'm, I'm imagining that's probably later in life as well because you, you discovered the internet around 2001, you mentioned. So putting that into context of your age. Um, oh no, that would make you about ten ish, eleven ish when you discovered the internet. Is that about right? Um, if I, my maths is working well, no, 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 because I was eighteen, seventeen, I, I was seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, so okay, my maths is not good. Maths is my uh, something as well that I'm not good. English, I say English is my second language, and I don't have a first. So if I fluff up English, it's because <laughs> I'm not that great at it. So with your um. The what I wanted to try and understand was at that time, 
around those ages, to, around that that eighteen period, uh, fourteen probably not so much because you know not many kids at fourteen set goals. But around you know eighteen, early twenties, had you set goals for yourself or or not? Did you did you know about goal setting? No, I didn't. I didn't. The first time I set goals was when I was, I would say, to be exact, I was 28, 28 or 29. Yeah. Okay. So just wondering from that perspective, as you were, you know, was that an impact on, on achieving, you know, or was it just going So talk us back through when you were 14, you're introduced to porn by your friend. Um, so what was that, you know, the, the motivator to that? It was like what what excited you? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what excited you, but, you know, talk us through a little bit about what that was like to, you know, what was your day like? Did you, you know, was it a constant thing where you were, were watching it a lot? How much How much did you watch? No, no. That, that time period, mm. it was very different from, from what's happening today. Because yeah. I, I was still an active kid. Mm-hmm. I like to play soccer. I like to go out with my friends. I like to read books. I, I loved I loved all of those things. Yeah. And I there was literally no way in hell for me to be watching porn all the time because yeah. I did not have access to it. Because it's not it's I, I did not have a phone. What I had was a VCR. <laughs> and yeah. I, I remember that. I, <laughs> Yes. So I did not even have my own adult films. So the only time at 14 when I could watch porn was actually go to a friend sometimes yeah. and watch it. And so I fantasized. But later, basically what happened as an example. So mm. there were these internet cafes. So I did not have internet at home. So yeah. I would go to this cafe. I would spend about an hour downloading photos so in that one hour i would be able to download let's say 15 photos Mm. and that was all that could fit into this floppy disk (laughs) i would grab this floppy disk and try try not to look creepy Mm. you know in this internet cafe as much as i could i felt so much shame around this Mm. and so i i took this floppy disk i went home hoping that my parents were not there. My younger brother was not there. Mm. And then I would insert the floppy disk into my computer, open up all those full photos, have my what's called PMO session, pornography, yeah. masturbation, orgasm. Yeah. And that was, yeah, th- that was what I had. And I would do this sometimes daily, but today's different. Today it's available immediately. You have a nudge to watch pornography, you grab your phone, you already see it. And what's worst is that we have soft core pornography all around us, especially on social media apps. Whenever I go to Instagram, whenever I go to TikTok, it's like the second or the third or sometimes even the first video that I see Mm. is a girl getting naked. (laughs) Yeah. Which is super triggering for porn addicts. They yeah. see the girl, then they go to porn, they mess they masturbate, they relapse, and then they go, Oh, I did it again. I broke all the promises. Yeah. I've been there. Right. So as a you know, with because I want to understand the part about you you talked about your you know, you discovered porn at at 14 and then you know that affected your ability to social because you said you're you're quite active. You you're out playing soccer, you read books, that kind of thing. How did it you know from the 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 dating and the the connection, um, developing relationship skills? How did that affect your? How did porn affect that? You because know, you're out being social, playing soccer, and things like that. Um, did you you know what was your talk about that experience with the the relationship? that you might have had with girls it sounds like you, you said you didn't interact much is that right or is that you know you hung out with your friends and then then you know didn't hang out with girls talk about that experience okay so if when you say zero dating skills i yeah. knew a guy like that i knew mm. and i was worse right than him. 
<laughs> Let me give you an example. When yeah. I was 16, mm. we had we had a party. So this girl in our class, she invited everyone to a party in her mm. apartment. So I came and this girl, she liked me. I yeah. knew that. And that made me uncomfortable. And when I came there to the party, mm. she made me even more uncomfortable. At one point, she pushed me into a room, she locked the door, and she wanted to seduce me. Yeah. And I was so, look, I'm 16, I'm super horny, but yeah. at the same time, no skills, very shy, my, mm, yeah, let me tell you the end of the story. So basically, she tried, nothing worked, yeah. I was super embarrassed, I just basically ran away. Yeah. At that point, my problem was, I was shy by default then yes. watching porn and hiding made me super shy like uh. sh shy squared and then i started having paranoidal thoughts one of them like probably the big Apologies for that. We That's just, why. So you, you were sorry. We we just had a little bit of an internet snafu there. You were saying that you were you were shy, and she was um, uh, you, you you she was trying to come on to you, but you you were shy and couldn't react, and got scared and ran away. That's where we lost you. Okay, okay. So my my the way I see it now is that porn was making me super shy. Yeah. And I, why? Because I was afraid that my parents will discover yeah. this and they will, they will actually give me a lot of grief. And then I started to project this fear onto being discovered, let's say, with a girl. When they know that I'm dating someone, I would feel that they would have the same type of reaction to it, a negative reaction like to porn. Yeah. And that's why. That's why I, I never tried. That was one of the stupid ideas, paranoidal thoughts that was holding me back from yeah. actually dating. And what I did, I lost five, what I consider five golden years from 16 to 21. At okay. 21, that's when I lost my virginity. And the problem is that I knew what I had to do. I knew. I knew where the girls were. Yeah. And they were offline in those times. <laughs> I knew where I had to go to meet them. I yeah. knew that I had to strike up a conversation. Yeah. I knew all of this, but that was giving me anxiety. Mm. I was fearful. And I thought to myself, look, why would I go and face all this fear, actually tackle that anxiety when I can't just stay at home? In the comfort of my monitor, my mm. crusty keyboard, and then just, and I was rewarded for staying there because I, oh, whenever I made that decision, I was rewarded by the short term pleasure of PMO. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that, it's an interesting thing that, you know, people, don't, I think don't fully understand in that space is that an orgasm you have by yourself is nowhere near as good as an orgasm you have with someone else. Um, just completely different. And um, yeah, so what I want to look at here is you're going, um, you've, you've missed these relationship skills, partly because as you said, you're, you're feeling embarrassed about, you know, watching porn. And then as a result of that, you're you're it's extending that feeling of shyness, so you don't want to go out and talk to them. You don't want to face that uncomfortableness because it's just easier to go back and and do things by yourself. Is that the the experience? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then so 
with the, the development of the skills, I mean, part of that too, I guess it's a little bit different now because when you were younger, you were looking at, at videos, um, uh, not videos, at pictures, whereas now we have videos as well. And the, you know, from that side of things, as it developed, did you start watching videos as well, um, you know, through your life? Were videos on porn or was it just imagery? Of course I watched videos. Look, yeah. it's with every addiction, mm. it's all about actually not. So gradually, you're not getting the same dopamine spike yeah. compared to what you had or originally. So mm. you need to keep increasing your intensity. And mm. with porn, this intensity is going from pictures to videos to hardcore porn mm. to really weird things fetishes then people would go to prostitutes they then prostitutes would not make them happy anymore so they would go to things like rape mm. and like the, the last thing it's like whenever you keep increasing this intensity with porn mm. and your sex addiction just in general it's like you are being inhabited by this dark energy and this dark energy, it wants more and more and more until it makes you lazier and less motivated until gradually you're super lazy even to get up, let's say, get off your couch. And in the end, it just kills you. It literally mm. wants to kill you. It's like it's like with, mm, with terrorists mm. and those people who actually, let's say, do mass shootings. What happens in the end? Mm. They they sh they shot everyone and then they sh shoot themselves. Yeah, because this is the the dark energy overtaking them. Same thing with increasing the intensity of porn. It it becomes a downward spiral. I was literally falling down that downward spiral, that rabbit hole, mm. and thankfully, I I became aware enough that I was addicted that I was able to stop my fall. Yeah. <laughs> So going back to when you were younger and your friend introduced you to porn, can you um for your from your background, were you um you know, was was sex something that you talked about with your parents or your parents talked about with you? Um I'm just wondering about that because like when I remember when I was young, when I was really young, my mum, you know, introduced us to the the biology, my myself and my sister. Um, you know, she she I remember this book that she had and it was how, you know, how and it was two robots. It was literally two robots on wheels and one had a penis and one had a vagina and it just showed that they drove together. And I spent the early years of my life thinking, you know, knowing what happened, how babies were made. But my question was, you know, do you just sit there or do you move? I, di I didn't understand that was my question when I was younger. But did you have that kind of thing where your parents talked about it or was it something that was talked about at school or, or was that, you know, that introduction to sex via, via porn? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, robots on wheels sounds like the definition of sex, let's say, 10 years into the future when we have <laughs> AI, when we have VR. Uh, maybe I hope, I hope not. I hope not. Yeah, I, I, it's certainly not something that uh, I think we'd get. Anyway, that's a big hype. But from your perspective, was it something that you talked about, you know, with your parents, or was it something you're educated at school, or, or was porn the education as to what sex is? Now, just like I said, I was super shy yeah. about my parents. I did not want them to know anything about any girls dating or anything. And that's that's why that was one of the reasons. They never sat with me mm. and they never discussed these things. So I thought they were to taboo. I wasn't yeah. supposed to talk about them and let alone talk about something as dark as porn addiction. Yeah. And I think this is a huge mistake that parents do. And oftentimes I would just talk to a parent and mm. I would tell them, look, one of the best things that you can do is well just you know, talk, talk to your kid, ask questions, mm -hmm. high quality questions that push them to think it and push them to open up. Yeah. But the second best thing probably is to teach them about the dangers of pornography. Mm. And you you cannot control what happens. Mm. Maybe they will get addicted, especially in this day and age. This is quite expected. Yeah. But yeah. the very fact that you do your best, you bring up these topics with a kid 
Mm. This will decrease the likelihood of them getting addicted. So you're bringing up a very, very important question. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, it's well because it's something I was from my experience. As I said, I, I grew up, and um, for me, I, I I was taught about sex when I was was quite young. Um, you know, very well. It was in primary school. My mum first, in, you know, talked about not so much sex, but how babies were made. So it wasn't, you know, wasn't just it was sex, and and I think partly too because we had some younger children. Well, we, my mum and dad, had some you know, some children after my sister, and then there was a bit of a gap and. Yeah, you know, um, so maybe that's where that came from. But uh, yeah, so I was just wondering from your perspective, was that something that you experienced? Also, to talk about, you know, you mentioned before as you were explaining it that you know you wanted this intimacy, you wanted the the connection by the, by the sounds of it with you know with a girlfriend um, at at a young age, but you know. You, so you had that desire for that. Talk about that as to how did you reconcile those two? So you want this intimacy, you're shy, and then you avoid it. Uh, and so you're not getting that intimacy. So you're not getting that fulfillment from that perspective. Um, so can you talk us through that a little bit? Well, obviously, I was getting whatever I could from porn. That yeah. was my sex. That was my relationship. And that's why now I understand those people. Who mm -hmm. reach out to me and they tell me that I have a virtual girlfriend. So there is this model that I follow. She shows her life. She shows what's, what she's doing. And every day I follow her mm. feeling like she's my family or she's my girlfriend. Yeah. And I did not have access to that at that point, but I had my porn. And mm. the feeling of love, intimacy, connection that i got from porn let's say it was like i don't know five percent compared to the real thing real mm. sex real love yeah. but i i could not do better the truth be told mm. i tried so i did three approaches in the between 16 and 21 three approaches the first one was a failure <laughs> and I mean approaching girls. Yeah. So the first girl was a failure because I was I was super I, again, I had no idea. Yeah. But the second one, I did better. I did better because at that point I started to I started to see how I could actually I started to understand psychology a little bit better, but I still failed because basically we had a date with the second girl. Yeah. And I just said on the very first day that I have feelings for her, mm. which basically killed the attraction immediately. <laughs> with with the third girl. You needy. <laughs> is it that I, I've done that. So I can I can relate to the, the too needy thing. It's like, you know, going, oh, I really care about you. And it's like they're going, uh oh, this well, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too needy. And I, I would say that this is creepy because girls, they just don't get this. They they take time to develop feelings, and when you come mm. to the first date, yeah, and you just you know like splurge your love all over the place, she says, "How's that possible? Like, yeah. What kind of a creep is this?" They yeah. just don't get it. Yeah, it's like we we guys we fall in love in five seconds, and a girl needs two months. Yeah, so we have to appreciate it. And yeah. with a third girl, I was better. I I finally now it's, it's, it wasn't quick. I actually had to sort of court her. Mm. That that was a long process for 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 more than a year, and then we we became a, a couple. But you're right. You're right. In the, at that point, the fear of actual approaching a girl was so strong that porn as an alternative seemed to make a lot of sense it's it was only when i was older my marriage fell apart i was 32 at mm. that point i already knew what real sex is mm. and when i watched porn i i knew now i knew that this is not the real thing yes it is a replacement a temporary replacement mm. but i knew that going forward there was no way i could actually be eating this porn, which I feel it's like eating cardboard. You mm. feel like you think that this is this is gonna be tasty, juicy, 
like an orange or another fruit. Mm. You up, you take a bite, and it's actually cardboard. And you realize that only after ejaculation. Yeah. So at that point, I, I had the motivation. And that's why when I sit down with people, I ask them one of the biggest things. What's your why? What's your biggest reason to stop watching porn? And for me, probably that was, was the main reason. Because I felt angry after my divorce. I knew I was, I was a pretty good guy. I, got, I had my life together. I, I had my business. I was in good shape. You know, I was, I, 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 it's not like I was perfect, but I, I, I was good. And I felt angry. My wife divorced me. It's like she, she told me that I, I'm not marriage material and I wanted to prove her wrong. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, you might have proved her right. But I, I really want to explore this intimacy part that you wanted because it sounds like, as you're describing it, was you knew when you were younger that this was only 5% of what was available. I'm using the terminology that you were talking about. It's like you knew that it was only 5%, but you had this desire to get more. Um, and you and you knew it sounds like you knew that there was more out there. There was more that you could connect, more connection you could have. And because when we're talking about intimacy, we're not. I'm assuming you're not talking about just physical intimacy. You're talking about the whole emotional connection that goes with with making love. Um, so you, it sounds like you knew more was out there. That something was missing by doing this by yourself. Um, was that is that fair to say? And 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 how did what was that drive like? Well, what was this this intimacy that you were chasing, but you were then not not following through and just just getting the the um, quick release with porn okay i had i had a taste of what it feels like to be with a girl mm. uh, i mean to have the whole gamut of feelings because yeah. when i was very young i would go to summer camp mm -hmm. and there I I would actually have a quote unquote a girlfriend. So yeah. that was a girl I liked, and there were there were let's say every summer there were three parts of mm. the summer camp, and every part I would I would engage with a new girl, and and it was very very basic, mm. very basic, like just dancing with her at the disco party at the end of the night, and th that was pretty much it. I never even kissed, but the first time I put my hand on a girl's shoulder like mm. this, yeah, it felt amazing. Yeah, it felt amazing, and that's when I realized that I do want this. But the barrier, my shyness, around my parents, and then I, you know what? After being shy and after failing so many times, not approaching girls that I liked not taking action, not doing anything. I was falling in love all the time, but mm. I would never, let's say in my school, but I would never, I would never take any action. And then it reinforced the fact that I'm not good enough. Mm. Not the fact, but the belief that I'm not good enough to get a girlfriend. Mm. So it, it was literally reinforced. And then I did my first call approach and I failed. Second one, I failed. And that would put me back in my development, let's say, for one year, because there was this period between my approaches, one year. Yeah. And so oh, I, I took a lot of time. And to, to answer your question, I knew, I knew the kind of intimacy and the connection and the deep, the deep conversations that I, I could probably have with, with these girls. I wanted them, but because I was around the guys all the time. I had my porn. I mm. I had my studies. I was very focused on studies. I was kind of a nerd. A nerd and also a creep. Because if you think about it, a guy who wants to actually talk to a girl, but instead he runs home to jerk off, that's my definition of creepy. <laughs> well, yeah, because I really want to get into this the, the side of things because, I mean, and explore that from a biological perspective. We, I mean, we obviously have a deep desire to procreate. 
you know, males and females. Otherwise, the species wouldn't continue. Uh, and so but you, you talked about this, you know, so when you're on summer camp and the first time you put your arm around the girl and you felt that connection, that physical connection, um, you you felt, if I understood correctly, you felt this this sense of, yeah, you know, this strong sense of connection. Is that fair to say? And is that something that you were chasing more as you know you is that some, not when i say chasing it's something that you knew that you wanted more of but something that you you know you kind of replaced with porn rather than going out and and developing those skills yes that's you're absolutely right that that's what happened yeah. i i had a taste of it i knew that it feels great i did not think of I did not think about this in any biological terms or psychological terms at that point. I just knew it felt good. Yeah. It felt good. But at the same time, I felt shameful. I mm. felt shameful. It's like, I don't know, maybe this was the very beginning of my shyness because I would go, I would go to summer camp mm. and I was away from my home. And I thought, just, just like with porn, I was basically doing something that my parents did not know. Mm. And I thought that when they see me, for some reason, they would judge me because mm. no one else is doing that. And maybe maybe I felt that I was too young to do that. And that's why today, I basically start... I, I talk to young guys a lot mm. because a lot of young guys, they struggle with porn addiction. Yeah. And even, even when they're 12, 13, 14, I tell them, go date it doesn't i'm not saying you have to have sex you, mm. you don't even have to kiss but just go out practice and practice <laughs> experiment see what works what doesn't just yeah. just practicing with setting dates this mm. is going to be already helpful this is a skill look today I'm not today, but my my father is sixty, almost sixty eight, yeah. and he's single. He's divorced. My parents yeah. divorced three years ago, and he is he wants a girlfriend, which is yeah. which is amazing if you think about his age. But he's super active, very energetic, very. I don't think it yeah. changes. I mean, I, I saw someone draw draw a graph of um. There's a guy called Mark Gunga. He's he has a program called Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. Um, but he drew a graph of man's sex drive, and it says that it peaks about you know sixteen or seventeen, and then he, he and then and he said from there it goes down, and and for you, if you can see my finger, he draws it and he goes from there it goes down, and he goes all the way through your life from there it goes down, and then you're dead. <laughs> so it's like I can understand your dad at sixty. Um, you know, my dad's seventy five. Um, he's single. Um, has been single for a long time, and and you know he's still having fun. So <laughs> I don't think it changes. <laughs> Okay, I don't agree, but I mean, he has his point and probably he has his data to back yeah. up that point. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> my, my point with my dad was where I, where was I going with this? You're talking <sighs> about your dad dating and, and getting out there. Or why? Yeah. I don't remember why I was talking about my dad. I, I mean, I love him. That's one of the reasons, but what's the other reason? Well, we're talking about intimacy and connection was was the underlying principle of what we were getting to. So maybe you know, uh, um, I'm not sure where that was was going from that side of things. But from from you know the intimacy side of things, we have this biological need to do that. Um, and and oh, you were talking and explaining about getting out there and and practicing and and being able to do that because to to have that intimacy to have that connection, it's a skill. Being able to to talk, you know. To be able to communicate with people generally is a skill, but being able to talk to the opposite um, sex is is also a, a skill. So I, I think that might have been related to that. Does that spark anything? Who no. knows? Oh, he's gone. It's gone. We'll move on. Um, what I what I wanted to understand was because you know, this intimacy thing is is really strong. I mean, obviously we have a need to connect, um, and the way you know from that side of things, we we have this desire and that desire for for connection is well to get that connection we need to communicate but as you're saying from your perspective you felt you know embarrassed about um what you were doing which then further inhibited your ability to to overcome that what did you do to actually overcome 
that ability or, or was it the case of you know you because you said that the third girl that you you courted for um you know a year before you actually start a relationship talk about that how did you over get out and and what was some of the struggles you went through to actually you know get to the point where you actually were dating okay i think with this three approaches okay with the first two I just push myself. I don't remember exactly why. And it's not like I did hundreds of them to, you know, to, I mean, to, to be able to analyze myself. No. Yeah. But with the third one, what helped me a lot mm. is that I actually saw indicators of attraction from her. Yeah. I saw that she liked me. I knew that. I knew. So it made the approach easier it wasn't super easy but it made it easier and yeah. i know this because a lot of guys will tell me when it comes to dating that i am looking for those indicators of interest and yeah. i always tell them don't do that create attraction don't yeah. wait for her to be attracted yes yeah. that's the first question the second question so what happened with that girl yes she liked me mm. but she also had a boyfriend and she was kind of getting out of that relationship, especially because she liked me more. Yeah. So it took her one year to break up with that guy. And it was drama after drama after drama. I got addicted to it. I was, you know, I was looking forward to her calls, to her yeah. emails, because yeah, I was missing her. That's normal attraction, though. <laughs> you, you kind of wait and you want to go. No, 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 no. That's, that's not normal. What I did, wasting yeah. my year on that girl, even though she later became my girlfriend, that was a waste of time. That yeah, one yeah. year, I should have spent dating other girls. And yeah. that would have increased my chances with her because yeah. she would see that she would get jealous, very competitive. <laughs> and and that yeah. should, then she would break up faster. I I like that. Uh, that's great. For for a, a story from my background to to share with you, um, I was in the army, and one of the when I was young, a bit, you know, from eighteen, I was in the army, and um, the viewers have heard this story, but I wanted to share it with you and for for your listeners who'll be be listening to this as well. Is there was a guy in there, and he was a good looking guy, but he was he was dumb. In in my view, <laughs> he was he he wasn't the brightest spark on the planet. And did you did you just say I, I'm dumb? No, no, not you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> So he, but he, he wasn't the brightest spark, but he was always dating these really beautiful women. And when I say beautiful, not just physically beautiful, they were hot, like they were lawyers, they were doctors. So they were gorgeous, they were intelligent, they were spirit, because he, he'd bring them onto the base and introduce them to us. And we're like, and me and my friends are going, how, how is this possible? This guy's not that bright. Yeah, he's good looking, but that only goes so far. Um, and one day I decided to ask him and I said, you know, so I walked up to him and I said, Shane, how is it? And, and I said to him, I said, you're not that bright. How is it that you, so I literally told him he wasn't bright. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't have a censorship back then. <laughs> and um, so I said, how is it you're dating all these really gorgeous women? And he turned into like this wise OB one and he put his arm around my shoulder and he said, Damien, what you don't see is I ask a lot. Most of them say no. You just see the ones that say yes. Um, and so, and that was a like a life lesson for me, uh, generally, because um, it's like just just ask the question. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to share that because I know you'll be sharing this with your your viewers and and um, you know just just as a, a, a as a practical experience, this guy just. And, and and I put it down to the fact that he was so dumb that he just kept asking questions. But you can learn from that. I, I certainly did. It was like no no matter anything I wanted in life, I just kept asking till I got it um, from from that experience. But um, I wanted to really get into this intimacy thing because I think you know there's there's two components there. We we really want that desire and connection. And as you said, you spent you you didn't realize you talked about how you know you met this girl she was seeing someone else but she had shown indicators that she was interested in you on gathering because that's why you kept going back um and is it that shyness that was there to going oh, okay this girl's shown some interest she's in another relationship but i'm going to keep hanging around because i ha i'm scared to ask somebody else was that part of the 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 rationale yeah yeah it, it was part but mostly I was just, I was head over heels in love with her. Yeah. She was, she was very beautiful. She, she's still pretty beautiful. Mm, and I 
and you know, as a guy who is, who was, and still, still am in scarcity a lot of the time, mm. and I, I felt that she was my only chance. I had to hold on to her, yeah. even, even though she was seeing someone else, even though, and I mean, now if someone's told me that a girl that he likes is seeing someone else, I would tell him the one thing, just run away, run away. And that's it. Don't mm. waste your time. And you, yeah. you, you actually don't want to, you don't want to be in this kind of a situation where it's like you are the third one in a relationship. Because basically what's happening is that, is that girl, she's cheating mm. on the other guy. And that means <laughs> that this kind of behavior is in her DNA. Yeah. If she's cheating him now, she's gonna, that it's very likely that she will cheat you on you down the road. So that's, that's pretty risky. Yeah. Are this... And it's, that's bad karma. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Bad karma. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, I've seen that a number of times where that, that situation, and, and that's where someone said to me once, they said, you, know, you have to be mindful at the start of a relationship. That's the best you're going to get, whatever that person is doing. <laughs> yes. Because I mean, we all put on that you know best persona at the start of a relationship, so it's it's only logically it's only going to go down from there. But I wanted to explore this this only chance thing you mentioned because you said that you know, you're with this wanting to be with this woman because she, you know, you felt she was your only chance. What what, what was the thinking behind that? Why why did you think she was your only chance? Okay, when you make three approaches in three years, yeah. that girl. That says kind of yes, that she she is your only chance. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I like... were like your dumb friend, mm -hmm. if I were making approaches left and right, yeah, of course I would not care. And by the way. Well, that's what I want to get to because that was my experience. Like, um, you know, and and I, I'm not, I wasn't using a metaphor for me being the dumb friend. I mean, that, that was a, a real person. But from you know, my, I had my first girlfriend in kindergarten, um, and then you know, a number of things, and and I was always you know just ask people, and there's times where I just didn't have relationships because I wasn't, um, I was busy doing other things, but it was. Um, but I, I never had a problem asking. Um, so I was just wondering what, what this whole, because I don't, I wanted to understand this, this only chance. Cause I, I, I don't, that wasn't my experience. It was like, you know, ask, move on, you know, that kind of thing. Um, there's, there's another person out there. There's, you know, and, and when you look about it today, um, the reality is we've got, you know, we've got the seven, what is it? 7.7 7 billion people on the planet. Half of them roughly are the opposite sex. So, you know, if, I, I I'm, I'm trying to understand what is it that out of that you know three point whatever billion I'm not going to do maths here um, it was at three point seven five billion okay, I'm going to do maths uh, <laughs> people that you thought there's only this woman was the only chance what was I'm, I'm trying to understand that psychology well one is just scarcity mindset right I was growing up in How? the Soviet Union. Yeah, okay, yeah. And back then, mm. I would go, I would go to get a loaf of bread. Mm. And I would literally stand in the line to get a loaf of bread for 4 hours, just one loaf of bread. We had this deficit all the yeah. time. Yeah. So I grew up with the scarcity. Yeah. And that was what it, it's still it's still bugging me. Yeah. I'm doing my best to get rid of it, but it's still there. I catch myself. And that's mm -hmm. that's one reason I I cannot save money, and I I not I don't allow myself to do that. When I see an opportunity to save money, I have to pass on it. Mm -hmm. I I don't I avoid discounts, getting discounts because mm -hmm. this actually pushes it actually retriggers my scarcity mindset. So that was one thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that. Look, I'm super shy. If I make one approach in a year, mm. of course I'm going to look at it as my only opportunity that comes once mm. a year. Okay. Let's say you have a meal once a year. Are you going to miss it? Are you going to eat it like, I don't know, like like you never ate before? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think that, that that's like, like simple logic. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. So you you went through this and this cycle of you know you you discovered porn. You be you were shy. Um, that the porn made you feel even more isolated because you felt you know you were doing the, something wrong. So you you pushed yourself away, and because you hadn't asked many uh, people, you didn't think there was that many opportunities out there. Is that summing it up? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, so and that's that's the exact definition of the situation that people find themselves in yeah. today younger guys because i did my call okay i did my approach once a year and compared to what they do today mm. that's that that wasn't too bad because they would they would never approach anyone what at best they would text someone dm someone on a social media app hopefully mm. But yeah. even that might not happen because, guys, look, if someone very young gets into porn addiction, it literally rewires their brain in a negative mm. way. And now mm. they lose all self-esteem right away because they're hiding. Whenever you are hiding something, you feel shameful, you feel guilt. Mm. And that tells you that I'm a bad person. That's running in their mind. 24 7 i am a bad person i'm a bad person something's wrong with me and when you are in that kind of a place i mean how how how's that and and you also taught yourself that you want the most beautiful girl because this is what porn teaches you it's all about the visual component it's all about beauty so you want the most beautiful girl but then you're thinking yeah. where is that girl and where and where am i there is yeah. no way I can approach her. So it's a it's a dead end situation. It's like a stalemate. It's interesting you mentioned that that you want the most beautiful girl because I mean I've got a lot of friends who are in very long term relationships and from what I can tell they're very happy relationships and you can tell when someone's not in a happy relationship. You know when 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 people are in their their forties and fifties and sixties and they're turning up to a function still holding hands, it's it's a pretty good indication that they're oh. you know. You know, um, whereas, and you can tell by the way they interact, and you can see the couples that aren't, you know, um, you know, that much attracted to each other because there's a distance there. So it's not one of those things. And so I'm talking about the friends that I've got that are um, in, you know, that those type of long term relationships where they're still very much in in love with each other, and and having conversations with them and talking about, you know, what was it, you know, what did they. What were the criteria that they set when they were looking for a partner? And then there, you mean we that's probably one thing to think about too is you know setting a criteria as to what works for you but the criteria for them was always more about character and that's not to say that the people they're dating are not attractive they 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 you know they're, from what i can tell they're very attractive uh people but they're attractive people as a whole as well so not just you know you know and beauty's subject i mean it's it, it's beauty's in the eye of the beholder is where i was trying to go with that um so from their perspective you can see when i was you know when i'm talking with them that they, their partner is the most beautiful person um and so they, they look attractive anyway but um they their goal what they wanted and what they were looking for was character first um, and if didn't make the and, the and one of them said is that I, I had a I had a, a set of characters and if they didn't character traits, and if they didn't meet eighty percent of that when in when I was first going dating with them, I just didn't I stopped dating them and just said that's not what what I'm looking for. Um, so I, I'm just wondering from that perspective because he's talking about porn as you say it, it it sets a false sense of of what to expect and that's where I wanted to take talk about that from the, when we mentioned video before um the behaviors of women in that uh, are not so far from what's realistic for women and, and i think we probably misunderstand and um that the women like sex just as much as men they just have different triggers um and porn certainly doesn't teach you those triggers from what i've you know what i've seen is that, you know, I mean, talk about that from your perspective of, of how did you, you know, go about learning, you know, what actually works to, to turn a woman on? Because um, it, it doesn't seem to be, well, in, in some, because uh, having looked at porn myself, it's it's going, well, how could you? 
<laughs> you know. Well, that's what I'm looking at. Going well, how could how can we reconcile that? Um, I was fortunate. I, I, I had a similar experience to what you're talking about because because my mum talked about it with me when I was young. I can't remember exactly what age I was, but some friends come up and talked about you know how there's a video and I'm sex, and I'm going. What's the excitement? It's just sex, mm. um, you know, because they were getting all excited about it, and I was like, I, I don't, I don't get your. What do you want to go off and watch this for? I, I and and I just didn't, didn't, I actually didn't go and do it because I was like, I don't get it. Um, I'd rather go out and do something else, um, because to me it wasn't this, you know, this taboo or thing. It was just a natural thing. So it was like, yeah, whatever. Um, but you know, I mean. I'm 50, so I, I've seen a lot of things. And how did you reconcile that behavior? How did you, you know, when you look at it and go, well, that's not what works for women. That's not what turns women on. Talk about your experience of of going through that process and how you develop to understand what women really want. Okay. Mm. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. I'm no, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> it was a... <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay okay so first of all let me say this the expectations that porn creates in men they are horrendous mm. this is not what real sex is about at all porn mm. is not designed to teach sex to people yeah it's designed very very skillfully in order to get you aroused get you hooked and get you watching it on repeat. That's mm. it. That's why it shows beautiful girls, I like ideal perfect bodies, mm. which do not do not actually exist in this reality. They do, but they're super scarce. And that's mm. not what what real body is about. It does not show any feelings. It does not basically show what man is supposed to do as a leader in the relationship. Mm. Only it only shows the pleasure that the guy is getting from porn. Mm. So the whole idea of porn is to overstimulate. It overstimulates you to the point when you get to real sex somehow and you don't get aroused. There is mm. this thing called porn induced erectile dysfunction, P I E D. Yeah. yeah. That that's because porn is just too stimulating. Now mm. to answer your second question, how how i developed my understanding of this so first of all in my marriage and in total it lasted for 11 years i never did and that's why i lost it because right. well you know i was not to mention that i was not able to actually do good sex but i also i i also tried to push my ex-wife to act out porn scripts i saw something on porn I liked it and I would tell her, hey, let's do it. And thankfully she said no, because yeah. I would I would have been so embarrassed now to have done that. I mm. didn't. I'm very thankful for her. If she's watching for some reason, some weird reason, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what I did then, after I started being mm. single, started yes. going out. So first of all, I started to learn dating skills and relationship skills 100%. I put myself out there, did a lot of cold approach, mm. learned a lot of theory. And at that point where I practiced both dating and sex, I learned about this. And the, mm. the first thing I learned is that it's, it's very different. And maybe this is the main takeaway for our listeners today. So guys, you're listening to this amazing podcast that Damien created for you to learn just this one thing. And while I was saying this, I actually forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. You have to realize that guys, our attraction is immediate. It's like we see a girl, we get attracted hmm. with, with girls. It takes way more time. I sometimes jokingly say that it takes a woman to get one week to get aroused. So before you have sex, one week before that, you start increasing her 
buying temperature very slowly, very slowly, very slowly. Whereas with you, it's boom, and you're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's great advice because I've, I've heard that many times before. Whereas, yeah, we're, certainly women foreplay is a 24 hour game at a minimum. Um, yeah. and, and they're turned on very differently. And that's maybe that's a topic for, for another podcast. But I wanted to explore this part because you mentioned about um, erectile dysfunction, porn induced erectile dysfunction, um, which is, you know, it's a very real thing. Where And the, the other component I wanted to explore about that was because. I mean, I, I've read and and heard about people in a relationship where to have sex, the guy was hey, I had a magazine open looking at porn while he's you know m- making love to his partner, and it's like I, I can't fathom that. I, I I can't imagine what that woman was going through to to think that this guy is focused on someone else while he's with her. That's got to be such a big turn off. Um, but the other part that I wanted to explore with that is, you know, your hand has a much tighter grip than a vagina. Um, and and we know, we know, you know, our bodies, we train our bodies. to. That's why the military does the things that it does. You you train a stimulus response. We, we go through drill over and over again. Now, if you've got your hand on, on your yu yang um, and, and jerking away with a, with a tight grip, you're training yourself, you're desensitizing yourself to the ability to actually have sex and have an orgasm. Um, you know, is that, you know, talk us through from your experience, if, if you're open to, to sharing that, was, was that something that affected your, your sex life? Yeah. And by the way, that story, uh, it actually got me aroused a little bit. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, to, to, to tell you the truth, a lot of guys, they do this. They don't have a literal magazine in front of them, but mm. they fantasize to images mm. So they basically use the woman to jerk off to those images. Mm. And yes, it's all about desensitization, both physically, Mm. because there is no vagina that's better than a man's hand, because you know exactly, and when I say you, I don't mean you, Damien, but I mean our listeners. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so a guy knows exactly how to please himself. And there is no way for a woman to know exactly what to do. I mean, even after years of, of being married and having tons of sex, it's hard to teach your woman how to do it. I mean, in a way that you can do it yourself. But so w- w- when you are desensitizing yourself like that real sex feels like cardboard and on top of that you are desensitized also mentally because Mm. you have these images of how sex is supposed to look like when a girl wants you so much that she just jumps on you Mm. and has an orgasm after an orgasm after an orgasm that that doesn't work and you find yourself asking is this is this really like what it is is this is this what i what i get after working hard on the relationship and just getting a girl naked and getting her in bed i i wonder about because what you mentioned there is that it's so hard to teach um you know the the woman to arouse you the the right way the way that you well i'm gonna say the way that you've trained yourself to do that because you know i'm looking at it from the other side of things too if you've trained yourself that this is the stimulus and response you have no idea because you mentioned before about it, the the intimacy not being as great and, and i read a lot about that from that experience and you know and the difference being is is because a person has trained themselves to respond to a certain way they actually and they and when they have real sex they it doesn't feel as good but what they're missing out on is because they've trained themselves a certain way they can't actually get the full gamut of what real sex is um and therefore they actually don't get it it is actually a lot better um but they just don't know how to get there um and they're going well it's it's not as good but that's because they've they've put this big roadblock in the way of actually getting to that point they've gone down a completely different path 
Um, so I'm just wondering when you say about you know this part of um, and that that's probably where we talk about that porn addiction and, and erectile dysfunction is because you know from that perspective they train themselves so far the wrong way that they can't even get to where the right way is and and get close to understanding that this right way actually has so much more um, you know much pleasure to it um because I, I can't you know from my personal experience i can't equate um masturbating to being anywhere near close to having sex with a woman it just it's not even in the same ballpark it's completely um it, it lacks so much stuff but i can imagine if you've trained yourself over and over and over again that this is the way it should be um then you you might not be able to take that leap to the next level is that an understanding in my well that's my understanding um and from my experience is that sort of what people go through or okay let me give you my example yeah my first sex sucked yeah i hated it i could not get a, i could not get an erection yeah and basically there was no sex so it took me two months yeah to develop the confidence Mm. to have real sex and when i had it for the first time it was mind-blowing mm. it's definitely in my top three of life experiences mm. definitely nothing compares to that compared to that porn is a joke so yeah. what you're saying i could not agree with it more you're yeah. right but when i think about this this is what i think it's like you know star wars Mm. dark side and light side yeah light like this the energy of light and the energy of darkness so mm. when you are pleasing yourself you are jerking off you watch porn you increasing your intensity of porn over time you're desensitizing yourself it's like this dark energy this black hole it's sucking you in you are on this dark side and you're going deeper and deeper into that you're yeah. becoming a whatever Sith Lord. Yeah. And but then when you are at the dark side, there is no way you can you can experience all those other beautiful things, emotions, experiences, mm. intimacy, being connected, being spiritual, feeling love, because they are on the side of light, all spirituality. And when it comes to love, love is spiritual. Yeah. It's like two souls connecting to each other. When you are being selfish, you mm -hmm. are into this dark energy. There is no way you can be selfless and be in that energy of light. You have to drop off the addiction, become selfless, and mm -hmm. then you'll be able to experience love. If you're still selfish and you go into yeah. a sex situation and you want pleasure from it, you're getting it totally wrong. Because as a special as a guy, I would say for me, 90% of my pleasure comes from actually pleasing the woman. Yeah. That a lot of fulfillment and accomplishment, that's what I feel. Yeah. And then let's say the other 10% is the pleasure I'm getting from my orgasm. Yeah. I, I love that you said that because I mean in life generally and and we talk about this a lot at, at share.care is that in today's world it's in your own selfish best interest to help others. And and that's <laughs> about it's it is because it's about giving. I mean, you get so much. I have friends that I have um have now that you know they were they did some hardcore drugs. Um, in their time, and and I, again, I can't relate to that because I never did anything in hardcore when I was younger um, or older. <laughs> but they um, they say now, you know, that they spend a lot of their time helping other people, and they say they they can't compare the high that they get from giving to to the high that they had from drugs because the high that they have from giving is so much better. Um, than any high that they got from the, uh, from doing drugs. And what you're talking about there, and I, I love that you're because that probably is the, the key part of that is, and what porn doesn't teach is that it's, it's not about you getting that makes it special, that makes it really 
over the top because when you're in this this moment when you're really connected with someone you're really flowing together and you're giving to them to help that flow all of a sudden it creates this whole different experience where you just just interwine and it's and it's it's this amazing thing where everything just explodes and I, and at the end of it it's like it's it's beyond anything that you can um do by yourself because you're because you've got that giving component to it so i love that you brought that up uh because it it just that's what creates that connection um so from that side of things you know in the, the development of the relationship skills i mean you said you know when you um when you first got married if i if i understand correct going back to that point that you actually stopped watching porn for you know a number of years is that did i hear that correctly yeah yes and then, and then you said there's something that draw you, you back to that do you want to talk about what it was that sent you back down to to wanting to to watch porn okay one of the reasons one of the reasons was just feeling bored i felt bored and I did not I did not know any other better way to feel good about myself mm-hmm. in the moment so I would just do this and my reason for being bored was basically being bored with work I didn't I worked long hours back then mm-hmm. and I would just lie to myself saying yeah I actually I worked so hard I deserve this mm-hmm. so I could do it but at the same time it felt like cheating to me mm-hmm. it, I right now i remember how i felt and i felt like cheating especially because at that point that was weird yeah i i found i found actually a porn actress that mm. looked a lot like my like my wife's friend and yeah. oh, I, I sort of liked that friend and mm. i was like i was jerking off basically to the fantasy of of that friend that was super cheating i knew i knew was i was doing the wrong thing and the problem one of the problems is that as you get into the relationship Mm. the newness it wears off and newness is key for testosterone that's why with a new partner it's easy it's way easier to get aroused because you feel that newness now what should happen in a good relationship Hmm. is that after those two years or let's say after one year when you feel that newness dying Hmm. you should be replacing it with deeper connection Hmm. the the love that we're talking about and it's even better than that feeling of newness excitement that's in the beginning of the relationship you were right when you like you gave these examples of your friends i would i would argue with that a little bit because i think that the dopamine spike that we get from something super exciting it's different than like the steady contentment that we get from helping other people for me for me it's different Mm. it's like it's like comparing i love broccoli but if you tell me what's more exciting to eat in general is it broccoli or ice cream i would say it's ice cream even though i don't want it I love broccoli, but I know that if I eat ice cream, I it will feel more excited to have it in my mouth. So mm-hmm. the same thing, the same thing with helping. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that replace, replace this newness with more love. But when you're young, it's super difficult to do because you actually develop this idea of love, of flowing, like you said. Of mm. being together, being connected as you grow older, because yeah. you become more selfless and you want to get out of your head more, versus a twenty-year-old guy who who is in his head all the time, who thinks about his body, who is who is anxious, who is always thinking me, myself, and I, me, 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 me mentality. Mm. For him, going selfless, that's like, like what? What are you talking about? Selfless yeah what is that that's not in my dictionary it's interesting what you talk about and i love that you brought up dopamine because i mean that's somewhere and uh a lot of people don't realize that you know well well, they do know that you know i think most people realize that dopamine is what makes us feel happy what a lot of people i believe don't realize is that you can actually control that you can create that simply by 
thinking happy thoughts. And I and I do this. I mean, from my life, I, I'm I don't have an, a day where I'm not happy. Um, I don't don't feel depressed. I don't. It's it's you know, and and that's a, an exercise that I've I've learned and and I teach people is you know this is how you can create your own dopamine release so that you are feeling happy all the time, um, and you can put that into your relationship as well so that you you feel that as well. It's not something that you it's cause and react. You can actually control it. Um, and you mentioned Star Wars before, so it's kind of like the Force. You you have the ability to you know I think it was um. Obi Wan in, in in A New Hope says yes. You, you, do you control it or it controls you? And he says it's both. And and that's where you know when you have control of the force, you can you know have this dopamine release in a way that that keeps you excited um, when you need it to be. Um, and so from that side of things is is having that connection, having those those relationships as you talked about in in your relationship with your your wife. So you. you you know, you were in the relationship, you, you moved away from porn, but then is it the case where you, you said that things got a bit stale, if that, that's to, to use a, a, a word, or, or, or what, what was it that, that triggered you to, to go, okay, was there one trigger or was it just an ongoing thing? How did you, you know, develop something and then and said have an attraction to your, your wife's best friend? Okay, before before I answer, could, could we do that exercise? <laughs> the dopamine with me? Thing. Yeah, I'd love I'd love to know your your, your secret trick. Grab a, a pen. pen. You got a pen? Uh, the, the last pen I owned was five oh. years ago. No, oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'll go grab one. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to need a notepad. You're just going to need the pen. Oh, really? Okay. So grab the pen. Put it between your teeth. Don't allow your lips to touch the pen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now try and be unhappy. Try not to smile. Hmm. Okay. What are you feeling? You know, you can't. You cannot put that in your mouth and not let your lips touch it and and not smile. Just by that physical action starts that dopamine release. So that that's a simple exercise it can do to actually make that that happen. The, the simple process of actually, and it's been proven um, medically where they've done a lot of testing on this, where you actually just think happy thoughts, it starts the dopamine release and then mm -hmm. you, you build on that. But it's creating it as a habit so that you actually become, it's like anything, the, the better you, you train at it, the, well, the more you train at it, the better you get at it. But this is not something that's hard work. It's not like going to the gym where you're lifting lots of muscles. You just have to start focusing on, and and we know this works. I mean, when you think about it, um, you know, you've probably heard of, there's a, there was a movie that was released in 1937, and I don't know you've heard of this movie. It's the first full, full feature-length animated movie called Snow White. Um, and I don't know many people that haven't heard of that movie. And in that movie, Snow White sings Whistle While You Work. Why Why do we do that? Yeah, exactly. You're smiling. You get it. <laughs> Similar, Mary Poppins, in the movie Mary Poppins, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. She talks about, she says, in every job that must be done, there's an element of fun. Find the fun and snap the jobs a game. Why do you think they design video games the way they design them? Because they they teach us these little rewards. If you give yourself these little rewards during the day, um, and same token in your relationship, if you give yourself little rewards for you know doing little things, and th this is we mentioned before about foreplay being a twenty four hour game. You know, walk up to your partner, kiss her on the back of the neck, and say, "Hey, babe, love you," and walk away. You know, you create all the, these little things. That's not hard to do. You'll feel good about it. But it's also creating arousal in your partner. Right? There's a lot of things like that, and that can be a topic for another podcast because we, we're going to have to wind up soon. Um, from from the perspective of of your experience, if you were to give, because yeah, we, we actually are looking at the time going, or we do have to wind up. <laughs> this has been fun. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, if you were to take your key wisdom or wisdoms for people, what would they be? What would be the, the key things that you would say to you'd like to leave the listeners with? Okay. Okay. And before I answer that, I'll answer your previous question that 
that I do know the answer very quickly. Okay. Yeah, no, no. So, go, go. Sorry. Go to go to that. I forgot because you asked me your question. <laughs> okay. It, so one reason was boredom. Yeah. For going back to porn in my marriage. The yeah. second one was actual depression because at one point I was mildly depressed mm -hmm. and I I had this model of the world. My actual my dog had died and I was blaming myself for that. And mm. I did not like the world that I was in. I did not like that my dog was not there and I made this mistake. Mm. So every morning I would wake up and I would feel this depression. And the only way I saw the only escape, the only coping mechanism was actually poor. That was another right. reason. Okay, now to key wisdoms. Speaking of depression and boredom, mm. there is always a psychological deficit that's driving porn addiction unless you're super young and and horny and you get addicted just because you saw it mm. but usually there is people who are happy they don't need porn mm. especially if they're happy in their relationships so yeah. the three main reasons the root causes for watching porn are unhappiness mm -hmm. loneliness and boredom yeah. and from here flows a very important tip Oftentimes, when a guy gets a girlfriend, that's the ultimate solution to porn addiction. Because mm -hmm. again, as, as we said, when you feel love, when you love someone and they reciprocate, it's like it's like you are on the on the seventh cloud, whatever, high in the sky. You feel amazing, and porn seems a joke in comparison. Yeah. Now, I will also say this. You need to become aware that this is a really serious threat, porn addiction. Mm -hmm. If you watch porn and you feel that it is detracting from your life, it's holding you back from the success and whatever you want in your life. From your studies, you don't feel productive enough. You can mm -hmm. concentrate. Your memory takes a hit. You need to realize that you are probably addicted and you need to start working hard on this addiction. Don't succumb to the idea that watching porn is normal mm. it's it's not normal because it is feeding dark energy to your brain mm. porn industry is i i believe that this is dark it comes with it takes advantage of people that work in the industry all these people they oftentimes commit suicides they cannot have a normal life, normal relationships, normal dating life. And by watching porn, you are supporting the porn industry and you are getting into this. You are consuming all this dark energy. It cannot be healthy for your brain. And let, let me give you something else. I would say this. You can reach out for help. Don't think that you are alone in the situation if you are addicted to porn read up on it what there are tons of videos tons of free stuff tons of information reach out read about it realize that a lot of people are in the same boat and a lot of people also get out just like i did and mm. just like damien we don't watch porn anymore we don't jerk off we are grown men and this is where are you going you are going to be a strong masculine man. And finally, the last thing, maybe this is the key takeaway, because I think uh, I think I think that a lot of people listening to this are older, just like I am, mm. and they might have kids. So the best thing you could do for your kids is help them avoid the porn addiction by talking about the dangers and yeah. not preaching to them, but maybe sharing your story and just yeah. saying that I had problems with this. And I would love if you don't. That's why I'm talking about this to you. What do you think? Yeah, I love that. That's great advice. Um, and Roman, to people to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to to connect with you? Okay, so if you are someone who wants success, wants a beautiful relationship, who feels that they have a tons of potential, but they cannot actualize it. They don't hit those goals because you are held back by porn. You get addicted. 
Mm. It's grip is very strong. You want to let go of it, but you can't. Mm. You you can actually break free. It is possible. And then you will get the success that you want and you deserve. You will get that relationship. All the world opens up for you as soon as you're free from this addiction. And one way I can help is that you can simply grab my free NoFap course, mm. which will help you build the basic NoFap no PMO battle plan. It's mm. available at my website, romanmiranov.com slash free. So this is R-O-M-A-N-M-I-R-O-N-O-V.com slash free. And by the way, as you grab the course, and if you later down the road, you decide to hire me, make sure that you're coming from Damien's podcast and I'll be happy to give you a discount. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's that's really wonderful to to offer that. We'll put all the details in in, in the show notes so that people are, can connect with you that way. Roman, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show. Hopefully, we can have some more chats in the future. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for making the time and, and sharing your experiences with with the listeners. The pleasure is all mine, Damien. Thank you so much. Thank you for your very 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 deep questions and listening so so closely and. Just digging really deep some of the stories I, I never told before. Thank you for being part of the Share.Care community and helping people around the world prosper. You're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share. The more people contributing to the world being a better place, the better the world becomes for others and for you. Thank you.